What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today, I have a very, very awesome build that I'm super happy to bring you. Um, big shout out to my community and Demon Muppets for the initial build guide. I changed a few things, but for the initial build guide, I'm absolutely fantastic. This is charged bolts and we are going to be rocking the staff of liam neeson because that's what i call it and it's a bad a staff it's pretty awesome man so it's going to allow our charged bolts to have a chance to attract enemies and last 300 percent longer so we're just dealing non-stop damage so yes this is charged bolts this is probably one of the weakest core skills that the sorceress has but with all the changes to lightning damage this season, I figured I'd try to bring you this build and just showcase it. You can see that we're in a Nightmare Dungeon 100. Now, I will say, before we get into the rest of the video, guys, this can do Nightmare Dungeon 100s just fine. The bosses are, you know, are a little tough, but uh, it can do all end game content. This isn't some crazy, you know, one-shotting build to Lilith or Duriel or anything like that. It'll be able to do those, but it's just not going to one-shot, nothing like that. But this is just a very, very fun build, and it's something different that I wanted to bring you similar to the Frozen Orb build that we had because of the brand new Blue Rose Ring, which that build is actually pretty pretty awesome, and check it out on the channel. But So today I'm going to bring you everything you need for the build, a lot of gear options as well as the skills. Uh, vampiric powers and the paragon board and as always everything is going to be linked down in the description below uh with the mobile lytics so here we go <clears throat> so in our skills we have two points into firebolt uh we're not running another core skill on this build the reason for that is because we have firebolt in the enchantment so we can apply burning with all of our skills next we're going to come down of course we got one point in devastation three points into elemental dominance okay so that way our core skills will deal nine percent increased damage when we're casting above 50 mana now with that you can see that we have 160 mana on this build which is pretty nuts so we should always have this bonus no matter what and the fact that charge bolts only cost 21 mana this is a no-brainer so charge bolts again all the way up into destructive charge bolts has a chance to have their damage um, reduce their damage that they're dealing to me by 25%, uh, percent, which is pretty good. Next, into our defensive skills, this is where things get a little wacky, but we're taking one point into Flame Shield, so that way we can become immune. We're maxing out Teleport as much as we can into Shimmering Teleport for damage reduction. And then Ice Armor with Enhanced Ice Armor for Mana Regen, so that way we're always full. We max out Glass Cannon for even more damage. Just be careful, you do take 21% Multiplicative Damage. One point into elemental attunement to reset a defensive skill. Hopefully it's always teleport. Then we're going to come down and we're taking one point into ice blades. This is only to apply to our brand new Talrasha's ring. That is it. That's the only reason we have this in here. We don't actually need the cooldown reduction here, although it would be really nice. I just don't know where else to put this in. Um, we'd have to take points out of somewhere else. Maybe just reduce teleport even more. Like, let's see, if I take two more out, we go... Dang, we, we actually gain a full second on cooldown just to have 20% of Ice Blades cooldown. <clears throat> I mean, 20% would be... We, I mean, we could try it. Let's try it. Let's just see on these next mobs. Um, and then we have three points in the Lucky Hit because this is a 100% Lucky Hit build. Okay, we need to have as much Lucky Hit as possible to proc everything, which I'll go over in the gear section. <clears throat> then we have a line the elements for damage reduction. Three points into mana shield for damage reduction, as well as three points into protection for a barrier. It's very important that we have a barrier in this build, so we're going to have it all the time. Next, we're coming down to masteries. Of course, we're taking inner flames, and we're maxing out devouring blaze for the uh, crit damage, which is awesome. Then we got one point into static discharge for a chance to spawn crackling energy, as well as uh, invigorating conduit to gain 12 when we pick up crackling energy. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, why are we doing crackling energy? So we still have a point inside of Ball Lightning into Wizard's Ball Lightning to form Crackling Energies, okay? Ball Lightning is going to be our next enchantment slot. And the reason for this is on a lucky hit, we're going to spawn a Ball Lightning. And then when it's dealing damage, it can spawn Crackling Energies. So not only does that allow us to keep our mana full, but it gives us some little bit of extra damage, okay? Now we're going to come down to our ultimates. We're going to go Unstable Currents for... Um, even more attack speed and damage. Then we're doing one point into course and currents for a crit strike chance. Uh, three into electrocution, so they deal less damage to us. 
and then three into convulsion so on a lucky hit we stun them so a big part of this build is stunning okay so we should have a very very strong chance to stun them with this on top of our uh, remnant of the infinite <coughs> when we teleport which will always stun excuse me next is where we had to change up the build a lot so for those who don't know veer's mastery is the um key passive that we would normally take unfortunately right now in diablo 4 it's still bugged and it's not working so because it's not working we have to do something else for the build but i will tell you as soon as it they fix it and it's back online then we're taking veer's mastery here okay obviously the close enemies with this build will do even better because we'll do increased damage and then they'll deal less damage to us and then the bonuses will increase when we crit but in the meantime we're doing overflowing energy which is the reason we're doing this ball lightning you know enchantment variant so for mana and then overflowing energy so each time it hits an additional enemy um <clears throat> cracking energy hits one additional enemy and then each time crackling energy hits an enemy our shock skill cooldowns are reduced so this kind of helps with our teleport as well as our unstable currents so that's the main reason that we have this now until when veers comes back online we'll put this here and we might change some of this but until then i still think this is very very strong um, we are going to test this really quickly just to see but i still want the more ranks in in my teleport but that is the skills guys and the enchantments so let's go over the gear pieces and all of the changes that you can do because i know a lot of people aren't going to have certain gear pieces so starting off we have shako in the helmet okay this is the best in slot helmet piece that you can have however if you do not have this then you need to get excuse me you need to get a nice helmet and you can either do one of two things you can put utility aspect of fortune which our lucky hit is increased by 17 percent when we have a barrier we will always have a barrier in this build with ice armor as well as using any cooldown so that is a very strong option if you don't have shako um you could also use uh whatever what's the other um helmet chant the one champion helm that's a mini shako in a way but you can use that one if you would like uh next what you can do is ever loving defense so we take 24 percent less damage from crowd controlled and vulnerable enemies everything is going to be either stunned or vulnerable so this is a no-brainer and then the last choice here is disobedience now i know i'm doing these 100s but you can see my health dropping a little bit i really want to put disobedience back into my amulet this gives you double armor i would go to over 10,500 armor um, so i'm still working on that i'm just testing a few things but right now this is initial and i think it's very strong so those are three options that you can put into the helmet as well as your chest piece if you also don't have remnant of the infinite if you have remnant this is best in slot this is really going to help you because you get the auto stun all right next we have uh the piercing static this is one of the main abilities that you need charge bolts pierce but they deal a little bit of less damage but they pierce which is good and then we got to bolts will again if you don't have this one then you can swap it for one of these or for one of these two defensive skills and then we have Esus here for the increased crit strike chance. If you don't have Esus, that's okay. I've been testing just normally with my um, ball lightning, or excuse me, my uh, ghost walkers. Perfectly fine. If you don't have Esus, easy to go, super easy to do. So you can swap these out interchangeable. It doesn't matter. You just get a lot more crit chance with this. Uh, next, of course, the main gear piece of the build is the staff of Liam Neeson. This is what allows our bolts to have a chance to be attract to attract two enemies so it's almost like a heat seeker it seeks out the enemies makes it easier and then uh we do all this extra damage so a big reason for the, uh, the the lucky hit is all the chance to restore you can see the restore primary resource on the lucky hit same thing here it's very very important now next is our two ring slots which these are non-negotiable you have to have them okay of course, we have Talrashas here for each elemental damage type. We do increase damage. This is huge. Then we got X Falls. On the lucky hit, which is another reason why we need a mad lucky hit, our damage over time effects have a chance to erupt, dealing 41,000 damage. Our lucky hit on here is 28%, and it's actually pretty good with how many uh, charge bolts because we're just like throwing these things out. So you have a really, really strong chance to proc this. Okay, I have tested it with Blue Rose. We don't do as much damage. Um, however, if you don't have Talrashas or X Falls, then you can rock this. Just make sure you rock Prodigy, or even you could put Conceited into the ring and be fine. Now, in our amulet, we're doing Conceited. We deal increased damage while we have a barrier. We're always going to have a barrier, so this is a, just an easy no-brainer damage buff. Now, what I really want to do is I want to test this without 
uh, conceded in my amulet because I really want disobedience there so I can survive better. I don't know if taking the damage hit uh, by taking this off would be ideal, but having disobedience in here to have over 10,500 armor in Nightmare Dungeon 100 just makes surviving just super easy. So I think it'll be a nice trade-off if I'm being honest. Um, what we can do really quickly is just test this. Um, yeah, we can test it on this one with the movement speed and the defensive skills. And just test it just to see, because I'm really curious to see how this would go, because the disobedience is just super strong. So these are a lot of the options that you can do, guys. Very easy to do, very easy changeable. The build is still works super strong. God Slayers, that's the other one. God Slayers and the helmet. Next is Vampiric Powers. If you guys noticed, my Vampiric Powers didn't change from the Ball Lightning build that we had, because these are just the best ones that work for this build. Okay, so we have um, Infection, which hitting damage or hitting enemies with direct damage and, and inflicts uh, a pox on them. And then eight of them allows us to do the poison damage, which adds another element to our Talrashes. With how many actual, um, like, charge bolts we're firing, this is very easy to proc. Next, we have Metamorphose paired with Prey on the Weak. This is pretty simple. Swap these. We dash and they get a curse and then they become vulnerable with the curse and we deal increased damage with vulnerability. Then we got Ravenous for attack speed, which is huge on a lucky hit because we want to just like spam these as much as possible because we are using a two-handed, so we do attack a lot slower than a, like a dagger or something. Then, of course, Undying for every time we cast a skill, we heal. This help, uh, helps our survivability. Now, if you didn't want one of these, for example, then you could... The only one that I would suggest to you is um, St. Julian Brace. You could definitely do that. You also have a small option here for domination because of the increased damage when you stun. But um, out of all of these, I don't think there's any one that you can really drop. So, yeah. Let's go to the Paragon board. As you guys know, the link in the full part of this Paragon board will be down in the description. But I'm just going to show you what I have. We got Destruction for increased crit strike damage. Um, we got Elementalist for when we're dealing the three different damage types. We have increased damage. Charged. Uh, every five crackling energy deals increased damage. That's not the point. We mainly have this for when we pick up a crackling energy. We do up to 15% multiplicative increased damage. Then we got flame feeder, obviously, for burning damage. Then we got exploit for damage against uh, vulnerable enemies, which is pretty easy to do. And then we got tactician, which gives us increased damage for uh, four seconds after every defensive skill to cast. However, we could also swap this for unleashed. Unleashed is a very, very strong one here. Or you can even do um, Reinforced for the damage buff. You can also do Territorial for close damage. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options here that is very, very strong to put into this board. <laughs> so you do have a lot of options to swap out. Like, you may not even need Exploit. Exploit may just be okay to not have here for the vulnerable damage. And you could do something like Unleashed for Mana Regen or Damage. You could do Territorial for the up-close range damage this this might actually be better for more survivability because it's dex let's just try that on here you guys already saw the build rocking <clears throat> before but let's do territorial there charged <clears throat> charge is really good because of the crackling energy setup <clears throat> excuse me guys sorry <clears throat> but with this you could always swap it like i said guys you could probably do control or not control excuse me um you could probably do like unleashed for even more to give bonuses but we only have one so i think charge is just fine here so let's try this as it is let's go kill some more monsters and just showcase this for just a moment we all right there we go dude that static shock dude is crazy there we go looking good the disobedience seems to be exactly what I need on the build, no matter what. I don't know if I need that extra cooldown. I hate these stupid ghosts. But you guys can see the build is just super fun, man. Super fun. I definitely don't need the extra vulnerable damage. Let's go fight the boss, just so you guys can see that. And that way you guys can see kind of how the build rocks. Um, I don't think I need the additional cooldown here. Um, I'd rather just have that. But, uh, yeah. I'm always iffy on the convulsion as well, but 
Everything else seems to be okay. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, let's rock this boss, man, in the face. Let's see how we do against the boss. It's not bad, right? Like, it's not a ball lightning. But you guys can see that, like, even against the tier 100, like, it's solid. This build would definitely be a lot better if we had Veers, that's for sure. Nice. But still not bad. Still not bad at all. I definitely dig it. But yeah, guys, that's the build, man. That is the Staff of Liam Neeson Charged Bolt build. You got a lot of flexibility in this build, a lot of things that you can change. It's absolutely no problem. And then I still, I think disobedience has to go up here um, just as a swap. And then I think what you have to do is maybe drop Shaco or something and put another one of the abilities in that would just be really, really strong in the build. But other than that, everything else in the build is, is pretty straightforward. It's super strong. Um, it's a lot different to play with than anything else that I've played with, um, just like Frost or Frozen Orb. So the build's really cool, man. It's pretty fun. Um, it can do Nightmare Dungeon 100s, like I said, guys. We just we just dominated that. But yeah, like the build, like the video, comment down below what you guys think. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.